So, since this weekend, what all have you finished on this thing? Um, things I uh, tore it apart Friday. I started on it probably about noonish on Friday. Got it all torn apart. Um, without uh, wait, no, Thursday. I started Thursday about noonish. Got it all torn apart. Friday I was out and came in Saturday to get some progress done on it. So I've done the DOD deletes. I did the cam already. All the timing components. And right now I am putting pretty much putting the bottom end back together. Uh, so I'm gonna try to fire it up tonight. Nice. Or today. So usually try to keep these as like a two three day job. So we can move on to the next projects because we got tons of those. And then this thing obviously got a custom cam. This thing's getting headers as well, right? Yeah, so it's got a um I guess it's like their 750 package or something for the C the CO6. So let's do it. We did the heads cam. Actually it's uh just valve springs and stuff on the head, nothing too crazy. And uh the basic bolt-ons. Okay. Like headers, X pipe or cat back, whatever you want to call it. I think we're leaving the stock lower with just the upper pulley. And that's about it. Nice. Yes, sir. What are we up to? Huh? Swapping out the valve springs on the last cabeza. You know what a cabeza is? The head. Ah, go, baby. See, talk about you don't know liquid Spanish. You know what cabeza is, huh? You know what some it's head is, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> Making sure. You get this special little tool. Mm-hmm. That makes life a lot easier and allows us to be able to do this on our own. Make sure you have the proper shims. If it has, uh, if it has lash caps, make sure you put the lash caps where they belong. Um, the LT stuff, LT4 stuff, the retainers are different. So the retainers for the intake are different than the retainers for the exhaust. So you gotta make sure you know what you're doing there as well. And, uh, but other than that, pretty simple. Just real quick, that's it. A couple whistles and hand yeah. movements, and it's done, yeah. huh? And, and you're done. That's it. That's it, bro. That's it. What's the difference between dual spring and a single? Uh, there's some beefier? single springs that, which, that make the same amount of spring as a, as a dual spring. But I think the dual spring, don't be, I mean, don't be lying, but I think dual spring's a little bit better, a little bit easier on the valve train than like a, a super tight uh, single beehive style valve spring. Mm. So everybody nowadays uses a dual valve spring with like titanium retainers on these. Okay. That's what we're doing. On these, this is actually the first time I've done some that utilize the shims. So, it takes the shim. I fucked up earlier, did this. But, so, take the shim, put the shim in there first. And then, X housed. Alright, X housed. Okay. Yeah. X house goes on the X house side. Uh, you're in Taki. You know what I mean? Taki? Yeah, these are the Intakis. Bam! Now, there's no valve seals. Now, this is the control. Got the valve seals, put a little bit of lube because nobody likes it going in dry. 
guy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I like to use Lucas stuff better than spit. Yeah. It's like you're almost all out of lube. Just recently became single, so I can use a quite Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Say no more, I understand. <laughs> Alright, let me get those nice and lubed up. in there get it to where it somewhat sits in there by hand and then you take my the special tool this is the valve valve seal install tool uh macro 12 millimeter uh deep impact socket and an extension slightly tap it until you hear it bottom out huh okay Taki goes on the Intaki side. Okay. Bam. Bam. the picture here. <laughs> so this is my little trick to doing this. I don't have a hard table. If not, it'd be super easy. We've seen it on the last set where I had where I put tension on the spring that kind of was pushing the valve down. My little trick to do that is I'll put a, a towel down there that'll compress the valve to the, to the table hold the valve up. It ain't gonna let the valve go down with the spring. Mm -hmm. For the most part, this is a plastic little part, so they got me working back here. In the corner of the shop and when I'm normally working over there with a nice hard table and it makes my life so much easier mm -hmm. because it's a solid table and I can swap it out and be able to switch a roof. Due to the fact that we got so many Nick Rick, you ready to go out racing? Mm -hmm. So looks like we got the blower on. Yep. About, about to get the cover. Yep. Mid. And we can fire it up. Hopefully we got old pressure. Nice. Done. Put that on TikTok. <laughs> so if you want to recap again, what all has been done to this car? Um, we did 
the cam package, uh, the LT4 cam package with custom cam motion cam, um, the usual cam, uh, old pump upgrade, valve spring, valve spring containers, headers, exhaust. I think we might do an intake, I'm not sure, but I think the pulley sizes are staying the same. And that's pretty much it. All right, so it looks like Aldo somehow managed to get this together. Yeah, crossing my fingers. Hopefully it actually works. This is his first time putting a car together, so we'll see how it goes. First time. <laughs> yeah, so right now we're gonna start it on the factory tune file. Uh, Steven still has to do the updated tune file. We have a cold air intake for it. I just decided to put the stock one on there just so we can actually get the car started, verify, make sure everything's good to go. And here goes nothing. Let me know if it catches fire. All right, I'll be the first. <laughs> Packages. It's our 800 horsepower package. Uh, basic mods, obviously, cold air induction system, American racing headers, uh, new plugs, new wires. We do our complete custom grind cam package with the DoD Delete kit. Uh, these cars come in with the automatic, making roughly around 520, 530 in our dyno. Uh, when it leaves here today, it will be around 660 to 680 on the conservative side. Uh, we do push them harder for the guys that race a lot. They will make 700, but for your average guy that just has like a weekend toy to play with, I keep them around 660 to maybe 680. So we just made our first pull. I'll make a few more adjustments here so you'll be able to see the process as it goes. Uh, normally what I do is I put my base file in it when the car starts up on the rack after the guys get it done. Uh, that usually gives me an idea on the fuel trims at idle. I make a few adjustments when it's on the rack. Then when it comes over here, I dial in fueling first. Once I get my fueling good at wide open throttle, and in the you know between 2,000 RPMs and 3,000 RPMs, 4,000 RPMs, 5,000 RPMs, I check every single part of the RPM curve to make sure air feels good. Once that's good, then I can start adding timing into it, and that's where we start seeing the horsepower gains. Uh, but yeah, hopefully through this process, us showing you more of this stuff, you'll see actually what I'm doing and why we're doing it. And then afterwards, when we go out and test drive the vehicles, you see what we're doing there as well. So another thing on these cars, the biggest thing after you take the blower off or the heat exchanger off is bleeding the supercharger system themselves. If you don't bleed them just right, they get air pockets in them and the actual pump on the heat exchanger will not flow. So if you don't do it correctly, and a lot of people don't, and they get their cars back, that air, when that pump doesn't run, the manifold air temps go through the roof and the cars will still run and drive, but when you are actually out making pulls on the street, you're losing so much horsepower because it pulls timing to help it be safe because the air temps are so high. So that's another thing I always look at when we have it on the dyno, make sure my guys bled it right. And if they didn't bleed them, 
enough, I always make it re-bleed it again on the dyno. Seven liter blow. 
make big power up top, but they make great power down low. So you really get the seat of the pants feel in these things. And that's why I said you're, for your average guy, that's why we do so many of these 660 to almost 700 rural horsepower with the exact same torque at the hit of the throttle is more than enough for most of our customers. But again, we do have those customers that want more than that, and that's when we'll do the, the bigger blower, whether it's uh, the root style, like a 2650, like what comes in like the LS, uh, the LT5s, or we will go ahead and change it out and do a centrifugal blower, do like a Pro Charger or something like that. And those will get more peak numbers, but the, the low end torque on those aren't like the root style blower. So in my opinion, my favorite blower on these cars is a root style blower, um, unless you are into like half mile racing or mile racing or just crazy roll racing, then yeah, the centrifugal blower is good for, you know, crazy highway speeds like 50 to 180 and stuff like that. But for short little bursts, stop like the stoplight stuff, uh, this, the factory blower is great. Or like I said, if you want more than that, that 2650 is where it's at.